Monday blues, meetings, deadlines, those Excel sheets, those boring presentations, and those sadistic whiteboard markers. I'm fed up with them all week, Monday to Friday. It's the weekend we've been waiting for, and I cannot head out to live my life, to rejuvenate, to explore the outdoors. I heard that Karnataka has some really beautiful places to offer in which you can return back on the same weekend. We are heading to Madikeri, the Scotland of India. This is saying that drive is the reason and destination is just an excuse. And what better than this, this Scandinavian beauty to do some justice to that. We left Bangalore around 6 in the morning and we reached Kurg around 3. We were welcomed by mad, mad rains. It was pouring very, very heavily. We had a great time. In fact, we had a lot of plans of checking out the car here. We thought of exploring the exteriors from the review point of view, the interiors and whatnot. But fate had some other plans for us. We're not going to complain. We're just going to chill now and relax. And we're going to start off with the review early in the morning tomorrow. We often tend to associate a manufacturer with a USP. For instance, BMW is known for sheer driving pleasure. Mercedes-Benz is known to have an amazing performance lineup of cars. But in this case, this particular brand has two traits in its kitty. One is they're known as the safest car manufacturer in the world. And the second being that they're damn serious about their mission for a sustainable planet. To put it across, Volvo has decided to go almost fully electric in India in the next five years. And this brutal transformation is assisted by the fact that they have completely phased out diesel engines from India. What matters for us right now is the fact that their flagship sedan, the S90, has received an all new petrol mill and more importantly, some cosmetic changes. At 64 lakh rupees ex showroom, this is not just a bargain, but this is a daylight robbery, of course, in a nicer way. But is the Go Green initiative enough to pull you to the one of the wafer thin dealers of Volvo? Or the German rivals make far more sense? cars there are beautiful cars and then there are these volvo's sedans lagta hai bhagwan hai bahut pyar mohabbat aur shiddat se banaya hai in gaadiyon ko these cars are capable of being drooled all day all night and even the next morning they are that flamboyant that gorgeous and add whatever adjectives you want to this Starting off with, the Volvo S90 was always a beautiful sedan and now with this latest iteration, it just gets slightly better with a newer chin and a couple of cosmetic changes. The only slight concern I have in the S90 is, it's way too familiar with the S60. As long as we are able to digest that particular fact, we are good to go. That's because the S90 is just an epitome of luxury and elegance blended together. For example, you have the very familiar face that you have seen in earlier Volvos. And this is not going anywhere apart from that. This design is not drifted away from that and looks very, very elegant. For starters, you have the Thor-inspired DRLs here, which is the signature Volvo trait. 
and apart from that these are the full led active high beam headlamps here which have brilliant just brilliant illumination at night in darker roads and apart from that you have the fog lamps here which are leds off. and then there's a thin chrome strip running below the parking sensors and this is the volvo's traditional grille that you have seen in most of the cars like the x60 x90 and of course the s60 in a nutshell the design looks familiar and it's not something that's completely new but we are totally fine with it why reinvent the wheel or why fix something that is not broken no matter how good the car is how comfortable it is end of the day it all boils down on how does the car drive but for starters before we get into the drive of the car i'd like to tell you that this is a 2 liter engine which churns out 252 bhp and 350 newton meters of torque although this is a massive bump in power output compared to the earlier diesel avatar of this car the torque has shelved off by 15 newton meter compared to the diesel variant of course if you like the front part of the s90 trust me on this 10 on 10 you are going to love you're going to fall in love with the rear of the s90 that's because it looks freaking amazing and there are so many people who have replied on our instagram stories when he posted the rear picture of this car telling that it looks sleek elegant and whatnot that's because this car is crafted for perfection and the rear is just amazing so Starting off with, you get the typical Volvo badging which dominates the rear part of this S90 and you have this C-shaped tail lamps. I am seriously in love with them. Apart from that, you do get a slightly tweaked bumper, the rear bumper with a couple of parking sensors here and this chrome strip here and even in the front is an accessory and it's not part of the standard equipment of the car. That's something to be noted. And apart from that, you get a thin raised lip here which doubles up as a spoiler which helps in reducing the drag of this car when you're doing your expressway runs but what's important even in a sedan and not necessarily an suv is the boot space and this has a gigantic boot space this car has a massive boot space it's more than enough to accommodate everything that you possibly want to stuff in a car if you haven't yet fallen in love with the S90 after the front, after the rear looks of it, the side is more than enough to bowl you away completely. It's mainly because of this super duper stylish alloy wheels. These are 18 inches of rubber, 45 section tires, which means that you need to be slightly careful when you're driving this car on bad roads. But nevertheless, talking about the alloy wheels, they are very, very nice, elegant. It's the black and silver treatment that they get, and that makes it a very nice design in the side objective of this car one thing that i really like here that makes you feel very nice very special is just touch here and the car opens you don't really have to press the button to open the car and get inside that's really nice and apart from that of course you get a chrome strip running across the window pane of the car so the b pillars are blacked out giving it a nice uh, sporty feeling from the side of the car and of course you have a sunroof here non-panoramic doesn't necessarily mean that every car needs to be stuffed with a panoramic sunroof especially sedans and then you have the shark fin antenna at the rear one small thing that i want to point out is these running boards are placed slightly lower and uh, which means that you need to be very very careful of course there was not many there were not many instances when the car uh, kissed the ground but you got to be careful especially with the 45 profile tires so as soon as you step inside the volvo s90 first thing that you instantly realize is the seats are very very comfortable both the seats are ventilated seats and they are superbly comfortable we drove this car for nine hours straight at a stretch and there was not a single moment where i felt you know i'm feeling tired or something like that on the contrary just for comparison the seats on the a class not comparing a class to this but the a class limo they were slightly firm and that was a bit uncomfortable to drive for a long time and apart from that of course a uh, lot of the interior elements are going to be very familiar to you if you've been in the earlier volvo cars or if you've seen the interiors of the other volvo cars so talking about the steering wheel the steering wheel is nice and it feels very butchy to hold uh, one small concern that i have from the steering point of view is uh, this is the horn pad and it kind of shakes unnecessarily even if you're not pressing the horn uh, the instrument cluster is slightly different here compared to the xc90 and the quality of switches is really good and feel that they're built to last apart from that so this is the gear selector here this is transparent this has been one of the highlights of the volvo cars for a very very long time apart from that this is a start stop uh, switch very interesting indeed however i kind of have a concern here because this is easily accessible by kids if they're sitting here apart from that twin cup holders here 
space for storage here and this is the parking brake and auto start stop switch apart from that there's a wireless charging pad here and one interesting thing to note here is the interior colors are just perfect it's not beige it's not going to get soiled easily this is the tan brown or whatever color bolo likes to call it and apart from that this really complements the black color here of this dash and one small concern here is this is a bit sharp and this is kind of triggering my ocd and apart from that this is a wooden finish and in and shell the interiors look very 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 nice and premium at the same time so this is the infotainment system of the s90 and one thing that i really really appreciate here is you get inbuilt uh, google maps and a couple of other applications like spotify but uh, that said what i'm really really uh, excited about is uh, this screen seems to be slightly better in terms of responsiveness compared to the earlier screens that we have seen and uh, let's straight away get into the driving modes here so these are the various driving modes that you have here the steering assist and one small and nice bit here is something called a steering feel firm which means that if you activate it the steering is going to be slightly firmer with additional weight that something that i love apart from that there's an option to toggle between the a suspension being on or off in the car and uh, yes of course you have a lot of bluetooth and uh, other connectivity features in the car but one thing that i really want you to check out is the music system of this car it's absolutely mind blowing it's incredible check this out and yes apart from that you do have something called as car status here we will get to know about the servicing of the car and various health parameters including the tpms oh uh, and just a small bit here is although the uh, touch response of the screen has been improved marginally it still remains to be a fingerprint magnet and this is a four zone climate control and one thing that i want, kind of missed out earlier is you get memory seats with two memory functions here and last but definitely not the least i really wish that we had some dedicated uh, buttons for important features or important things that we are going to navigate uh, because it's slightly difficult to be dependent on the touch screen all the time because the physical buttons are very less although the front seats are supremely comfortable in the s90 i'll have to admit for the fact that uh, the rear seats are slightly more firm than what they could have been but and it could be slightly discomforting because you see especially this particular segment the s90 versus the e class the 5 series they all catering to the chauffeur driven segment mostly and uh, this is where that particular issue arises if somebody is looking forward to buying this car they will wish that the rear is more comfortable than what it is currently but that said if you're someone who likes to drive and if you're buying the car to drive for yourself this shouldn't bother you a lot it's not that the seats are bad or something but it's just that i had some better expectations from it apart from that this is the rear center armrest and this is how the cup holders pop up and a very nice and interesting move in it because if somebody is not using the cup holders these vacant spaces here do not make things look very premium or appealing and talking about the comfort point there is ample legroom it's all the legroom that you would ever need here uh, the under, under thigh support is good and of course you get dual zone climate control for the rear also so finally driving the volvo s90 first things first there's an option if you want to make the steering firmer than what it is some people like me uh, prefer steering which is heavier which is firmer and some people prefer that you know the steering should be lighter and easy to use in easy to maneuver the car in the city i think this thing is going to solve both the problems it's a really nice feature indeed and i think it should be carried over to other cars as well it's going to be very interesting and apart from that yes this is a 2 liter petrol engine producing 250 bhp and 350 newton meter of torque like we said earlier and yes volvo has decided to use the only petrol formula here no diesel option available at all and i think that's a slight concern because the efficiency from this engine isn't really great we saw that in the xc90 and uh, we saw in the s90 as well and this car was running on some around 6.5 km per liter which is a concern and uh, apart from that talking about the brakes the brakes of this car are actually good and talking about brakes uh, soon now because uh, we did drive the xc90 some time back a couple of months back and we found that the braking of that car could have been better not up to the mark of volvo but however things are slightly better here that's not going to be a problem at all but the braking is good and talking about 
uh, the gearbox is an 8 speed casing gearbox and uh, uh, sometimes it's not necessary that we need to complicate things to make uh, the best use of them and this is a typical uh, dock on motor gearbox and it's, it's very smooth uh, there is negligible lag I'm not saying that there's zero lag the gearbox lag is negligible and uh, you're not going to feel that lag at all in most of the cases unless until you're really stuffing in your foot on the pedal then apart from that we of course have a manual mode in the gearbox however paddle shifters are missed in this car not a, it's not mandatory that every car should come with paddle shifters but nevertheless having them is a nice thing but Volvo has decided that no S90 is not going to get the paddle shifters and we do not have the paddle shifters here in this car right now but however there's a manual mode which you can slot from this beautiful crystal clear transparent gear lever so talking about steering feedback again in general uh, I'm really happy that Volvo's have considerably improved in terms of the steering feedback gone are those days especially the days of XC40 when the steering was so light so lifeless that you did not have you did not feel the thrill of driving but that's not the case here uh, this steering is actually weighing up really, really well in even in speeds like 60 to 70 kph that makes the whole driving experience much much better so how easy is it to take u-turn in this car let's find out we're taking a u-turn here and let's see how easy or difficult it is done I guess yes it wasn't difficult at all and you can see the light blinking there that's the blind spot information system that says that you know there's a blind spot and there's a vehicle approaching from behind us so the car is of course filled with tons of driving aids uh, which you can use to maneuver in the city or highway the area where the S90 excels is in delivering a comfortable ride Everything here like the stiff chassis, the coil springs up front, the air suspensions at rear work towards ensuring that passengers travel with great ease. The insulation levels of sound are top notch just like any other Volvos out there. When you come upon some large craters, the Volvo manages to take the edge off quite effectively. You do have to take care of a large speed breakers, especially if the car is fully loaded with 5 on board. The long wheelbase and relatively low ground clearance comes into picture here and you might end up bruising against the ground if you aren't very careful. Driving it in a relaxed manner is so much nicer. The S90 will be great to drive over long distance. There's some kind of firmness over broken patches given that the car gets 45 profile tires but with coil springs up front, super sharp bumps are quite intuitive in making their way through. But thankfully, as speeds build, this evolves into more pliant, secured feel. There's some lean around bends given the generally soft suspension but the SP architecture has always been a well poised one. Having said that, those looking for a strong light footed handling will need to look elsewhere given Volvo's front driven layout and safe dynamics. The S90 is at its best when driven calmly. The light controls encourage this and this driving experience seems more balanced as a result. Volvos have always been of great value in India and that seems to continue with these petrol versions too. At 61.9 lakh, the Volvo S90 in petrol guys easily offers one of the most nicest cabin experience in its class. For less money than many rivals, with its rich ambience and extensive laundry list of features, especially in this safety department. The new engine makes the driving experience much more better and with fewer anomalies around it, we have a lot to rejoice. And of course, the useful tech upgrades and the Volvo S90 continues to remain the top pick in the straightforward mid-sized luxury sedan space. A huge shout out to our hospitality partner, Cool Wilderness Resort, for hosting us here for the last two days. They have been literally pampering us with everything possible and especially the lip spanking food is something that I'm going to remember for a very, very long time even after reaching Bangalore. That's about it. If you guys like the video, do not forget to subscribe to our channel and follow us on Instagram. Take care, drive safe and we go all the way to Bangalore. Or rather wait, we drive all the way to Bangalore, of course, in this exquisite beauty, the Volvo S90.